there's going to come a point in everyone's relationship with Jesus, just like it did for these disciples, where the love that they have received from him becomes the kind of love that they give to everybody else. And I'll tell you this morning that if and when that finally happens in your life, it's going to radically change the dynamic of the relationship that you have with, in particular, the rest of Jesus' followers. Because I want you to notice that he's commanding them to love one another in this way. He didn't say, go out and love the world the same way that I've loved you. Go love your blood family the way that I have loved you. He says, love each other. And I'll remind you, who's he speaking to? He's speaking to 11 men. These are his disciples, the tried and true. These were the faithful. These were the devoted, none of whom he was related to. None of whom were unbelievers out there that, you know, Jesus just happened to know. These were those who were most intimately connected with God through Christ. In modern vernacular, I would say those within the church, the faithful within the church, those who have devoted themselves and have a track record of having done so, devoted themselves to Christ. He says, you love each other like I loved you. Now, this kind of love <coughs> is going somewhere. <coughs> it's not stagnant. God help us if we all have the same level of love for each other by the time this is over that we had when we first met, <laughs> right? We first meet each other and we're like, hey, how you doing? What's your name? You're kind of creepy, you know? No. <laughs> Some of you it was that way, but not everybody. All right, some of you. But, but at the... Uh, all kidding aside, there isn't a whole lot of love to kick things off. We're strangers. I'm sorry, but I just can't love you in the same way that I can after we've been through a few battles together, after we've shed some blood together, after we've laughed and cried together. We need to, to experience life together in order to form a basis upon which we can actually apply the love of Christ. This can't be just we cross paths once a week on Sunday mornings between 10 and 12, and then that's love. It can't be just a real loosely connected kind of, you know, you live your life, I live mine. We deal with each other when we have to, but no more than that, please, kind of relationship. If we're going to love each other like Christ loved us, then we've got to be all in, right? Because Jesus was all in. He wasn't like, you live your life, I'll live mine, I'll intervene when I have to, but other than that, you're on your own. He wasn't a hands-off kind of, you know, you guys do as you please and eh, I'll see you on Sunday. Jesus is like, you, you accept me as your Lord and Savior? I'm in. Like literally, I'm going to possess you so that when you want to run away, I'm still there. When you have second thoughts, I ain't leaving. That's how, he, how committed he is to this relationship. And he's calling you and I to be no less committed we don't give up. We don't give up. 